everyone. Blessings, everyone. Welcome back to Eyes on Prize. I want to talk about a topic that a lot of people ask me a question. And the question is, why does bad things happen to good people? So that's going to be my topic for today. Why does bad things happen to good people? So I want to start out like this. It's called, it's not about good or bad. Bad things happen to everybody, not just good people. Bad things happen all around the world. Bad things happen also to bad people. But I understand what the person meant when they asked, why does bad things happen to good people? Well, I'm going to break it down. It is called trials and it's called tests. And we have to go through the trials and the tests. It's not all about good time. A lot of people love the good time, but nothing, nothing bad. They want nothing bad to come with their good time. They just want to have a good time always, you know, uh, be happy all the time. But we got to understand that sin came into the world from Adam. So when Adam sinned, as in disobey God, that's how good and bad came into the world. And just like when God gave Adam the law or the rules of the garden, what to do and what not to do, what to eat off, what not to eat off. And when God gave him Eve, his wife, God did not give Eve anything, any rule or law. She, he ex, uh, God expect that Adam would tell his wife, well, we can do this, we can do this, but we cannot do this. Because if you look at the story too, that when Eve was tempted and she ate the apple, nothing actually happened. Nothing happened. No change, nothing. But as soon as Adam ate the apple, that's when everything changes. They realize they were naked because God did not give Eve instruction. He gave Adam full instruction. Okay, so I say that to come back to the story that I'm saying, uh, I'm going to be talking about because I'm going to share my personal story too. So sin in, it is in the world because of Adam and Eve. Okay, so as it, especially when you give your life to God, I don't know a lot of people thinking that when you give your life to God, give your life over, fully committed to God, that all will be rosy and, and, and everything is going to be okay. That is a lie. I realize in my Christianity or my walk with God that the deeper you get, into the word, the deeper your anointing become, the deeper you value God and want to be obedient in every way and, and fear him and doing everything that God wants you to do, the trials and the tribulation is going to come. That's where the devil stepped in, you know, and he is there. He sent people to destroy us. He, he, he sent, um, you know, demons after us. We, as Christians, because if they can wound us, then it's like they, they get the victory because the strong people are the ones that actually motivating the weak ones out there, giving them encouragement, letting them know you can do this. Just hold on a little bit longer. So I'm saying that to say this. is like I have been through hell and back. I'm going to just give you a rundown. I'm, I've been through hell and back. In, 20, in 2000, I lost my granddad. Okay? In 2009, I lost my mom. 
in 2012, my husband left. And the funniest thing about all of this is that's when the darkness started creeping into my life. Because when my husband left, I'm going to tell you this, I decide this is when the darkness starts sneaking in just more is when he left. I decide to give my life 110% to God, meaning totally. Because when I was married, my um, job was to take care of my husband, make sure he's okay. And to me, is God was on the back burner. He wasn't the four, the first person in my life because I got to be taking care of my husband. So the thing about it is what happened to me is because of my disobedience. My um, God told me not to marry my husband. He told me not to. And I did. Everything God told me not to do, I did. So sometimes we cannot blame things that is happening in our life. Sometimes we got to come to the realization that we sometimes create the problems in our life because I created this person or, or problem in my life because God told me he was not my husband. God told me that's not the person he had for me. And I still went and pushed it and forced it and for it to happen. And then as soon as he got to where he needed to go, he left. So when I decide to give my life to God 100%, now I become celibate. So I've been celibate for 12 years now. And I realized one thing. After 2012, when he left, it's like, it's like the whole hell was thrown at me. Because after that, um, and like I said, I'm fasting. I, I start fasting more. Every Sunday I start fasting. I start going into the word. I start teaching people when they come to my business because I own a business at that time. I will teach them my the business will be the sanctuary there that people will come and just break down and feel the presence of God. So I realized the more I was doing for God, the more I occupied I was with God, the more the attack come because in 20, in 2017, uh, my grandma died the 2nd of January. And then that year, 2017, July, my big brother went missing. He's still missing till this day. It's been seven years. I have to do a video on that to see if I can get justice for my brother. So I'm going to follow up on that one. And when my brother went missing in July, I lost it. When I said I lost it, every different feeling was coming my way. Depression, hurt. It's like I remember my pastor will come to my business and he, they will try to force me to eat because I did not, food was not something that I wanted. There are times I didn't want to get out of bed. I just want to lay. I just want to sleep. I don't want to talk. I just want to lay. And the funniest thing about everything is I remember a friend say to me that when she saw me, she felt like I was like, looked like I was dying. There was no blood in me whatsoever. I remember another person said they saw me and I have a dark glasses on and she said she could see my pain even though she couldn't see my eyes. She said when she looked at me, she could tell that I was going through. And I remember I would lay in bed. That's why I did a, a, a story too to say um, so many losses. I feel like Joe because I felt how Joe feel at that moment. And, you know, it, I keep persevering. So after that, I lost my business. I gave up my baby. It was 12 years I did in that, that business. And I lost it because I had no desire, no strength, nothing. It's like I lost every single thing. Creativity. I lost 
everything. And the one thing I never did was question God. I've never questioned God. I have been going through it. And then this is how another attack come. Because the devil realized that what he did, what he did to my, what uh, uh, God allowed to happen to my brother, um, the devil thought he had me. And when he realized that he did not have me where he thought, because God will give your enemy permission. Okay, as in give the, the Satan permission to tempt you. Okay, remember that. But he cannot take your life. Nobody can take your life without God permission. And I remember this lady that supposed to be a friend would always come to my business and I would hear God say, don't allow her in your business. Don't let her stay there, not even for a second. And there are times I would thought, think to myself, I'm talking to myself. And I remember after I closed my business down, when I closed it down, I really was good. I was strapped, meaning that I had enough money to figure my life out. I just needed to back away from everything from when my brother went missing. And I just needed just to be by myself. So I was strapped. And that within that year, that late, same lady came at my house and say to me that, God, be careful when people use the word God. Please be careful. Not everybody talking about our God, our Heavenly Father. They're talking about different gods. And I remember she brought some money to me and say, she, she gave me an envelope with a greeting card. And also she gave me uh, money that was wrapped in yellow paper. And at that time, like I said, for me, uh, because I was going through so many pain and everything, I wouldn't spot nothing happening. You can be a wolf right there in cheap clothing that she was. I would have missed it because I was in so much pain. I was going through. So the person gave me the money and it was wrapped in uh, a paper, uh, a yellow paper. So as, as soon as that person gave me money, I don't know where all my saving went. My saving flew out the door just like that, less than a year. And I'm like, I did not take a vacation. I didn't take nothing. What is going on? So basically, I was broke. Could not pay my bill. Couldn't do nothing. And I remember I sat down every month when my bill was supposed to be paid. And I have nothing, not even a dime. I would go into the scripture and I would say, Lord, you said to ask and it shall be given. Seek and it shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. And then I go back and I say to him, Lord, you said to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all. All these things shall be handed on to me. I said, God, I'm seeking you. I said, God, I'm praising you. I said, God, I'm praising you in my sadness. I'm praising you in my pain. I'm giving you the glory due unto your name. I'm giving you the worship due unto you, Lord. I have no money to pay my bill. And just like that, repeating the word to God, I, my All my bills would be paid. It will be one day be, uh, before my earnest, uh, my earnest, uh, my earnest fee would be up. Cause you know the grace period that it, it will be not the earnest fee. Um, the grace period it would be like a day before the grace period up. And when I tell, cause after that you'd have to pay a uh, late fee. And when I tell you every time it never. That God pulled me through. And there's one particular lady that I love so much. Her name is Robin. That girl will say, sis, do not call me last minute to tell me anything. Let me know the first of the month, even if you don't, even if you are planning to have the money however, and it don't come through, don't tell me after, just tell me now. So in case you don't come up with all the money, I'll be there. That girl has been there for me through everything, and I don't have to give her explanation or anything, and she will be there, and I'm like, God is like telling me, I got you. Don't look at what you're seeing because remember when you're in a storm, 
You really cannot see the, the end of the storm because there's so much darkness around you. You don't know what is actually in that storm. So you have to wait the storm out. You have to wait it out because after the rain and you see that the brightness and the light coming back into the darkness seem like it, it would never end. You just don't want to stop. And when you look and see the light coming through and the rainbow coming through, it's like you can be like, okay, you know you're going to be okay. So, and then... It's like, even my sister, I remember they just raised my um, my mortgage again because they said I was um, short in escrow, right? So I was there and I, I went to God again. I'm always going to God. I said, God, I'm there on the battlefield. I'm going to the nursing home. I'm doing everything that you asked me to do. I put your people before me, Lord. I put your people before me. I go where you go. I never question where you want me to go. And when I tell you, I say that to God because I didn't know where I was going to get that, that extra $150. And when I tell you, I went to bed. And I woke up the next morning to a text saying, your sister sent you that. And she sent me the exact amount <laughs> that I needed to pay that bill. I'm sharing this story to tell people. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Like I said, and then the lady that gave me that money in that yellow paper in 2022, I was fasting. I did a three-day fast, and then I heard God say to me, you're going to die that night, and your spirit is going to raise three times. And I didn't understand, why am I going to die? I mean, I've done fasting so many times. I'm used to this. My three-day fast without food or water, I'm used to it because that's how after I come out of that three-day fasting, Oh my God, I can actually go out and God can use me to heal people because of the anointing on me for not eating food and just in the word and talking to God, communing with God. And that night, I didn't, I don't remember nothing. I got up to turn um, something off and I didn't even know I was on the ground. I fell. I fell on the ground. I, I was, and my spirit was over my body. But after I came back, that's when God said I had to die because that person sacrificed me. But the thing about it is, that's why it's always good to trust God. Because even though the enemy wanted me dead, God said, nope, I did not give permission for her death. And while I was on that ground, my spirit was over my body. And then I went back, I see myself, went back into my body. And all around me was pure darkness was around me. And I live alone. So it was scary that my spirit was up and my body was laying down on the ground. I am just trying to share this. With, and then it didn't stop there. After I died in 2020, um, January 22, I mean, January 2nd, my dad died that same month, two days before my birth, um, two days after my birthday. So I can really tell somebody to hold on. I can tell you to hold on. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Hold on, keep that faith because this too shall pass. It will pass. We have to learn to trust God. Think about it. God sent his son to die for us. Look at how many things that God, um, Jesus went through. And he was a good man. And actually still is a good man. Because the Bible said the word become flesh. And dwells among us. And we be El is glory. So God put on flesh. Because God is a spirit. Spirit cannot bleed. So he took on flesh, created the son to come and bled and die. He have been, he, he know what it is for us to go through pain. And everything he been, been through, the suffering, all that, that's it. 
that was all an example set for us. Knowing for us to know that when we're serving God, it's not always going to be a beautiful day. It's not going to be all a blessed day like some preacher or pastor will always preach about blessing and blessing. They need to teach of uh, us how when we're in the valley, when we're in darkness, how to get out. That's what the main thing is because we are going to go through things as a child of God because Satan needs to eliminate us so we cannot motivate people to get saved and come to God before it's too late. So count it joy when you go through divers temptation and go through a whole lot of stuff. I would laugh. Sometimes I would just laugh and said. Wow, obviously I'm doing something. Like a friend will say to me, would you, would you um, shake a fruit tree if there's no fruit on it? There's nothing to gain. So if your fruit, she said to me, your fruit has a lot, your, your tree have a lot of fruit on you. That's why the enemy coming at you like that. That's why they coming because there's a lot in you to get rid of, to shake it out. Because if they can discourage me, there's going to be a lot of people will be discouraged because a lot of times people say, oh my God, you are so strong. I'm not strong. I'm not strong. But when I am weak, God is strong. I pull my strength through God. And I learn not to grumble or, 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 or always have, uh, you know, something bad to say of what I'm going through. I prefer to just be quiet and just still praising God because I know that my season will come. It will come. So I'm trying to encourage somebody out there that is going through a season 